All right. Time preference is one of the major topics in behavioral economics. Prospect view is one of them, and time preference is typically the second. So, uh, to use a fi financial motivation, it would be investors only care about delays in payoff in terms of interest gained or not. So, in any typical intertemporal economics model, essentially investors are trading off between future and today with a certain discount factor or discount rate, depends on how your formula is written. The question is whether this is realistic. Whether this is realistic. Is there any reason to, be to believe that people discount the future by a constant amount every period? Now, you might be surprised to know that there's actually no empirical foundation for this idea when economists propose this right there's no there's no that economists did not conduct some sort of study before they come up with this idea that people should discount the future by constant amount in fact this idea predates economists that it predates economics this idea of this constantly discounting the future comes much earlier than the modern discipline of economics. It's simply <coughs> mathematically convenient. Discounting by a future by a constant amount mathematically lends itself to a very clean formula. So standard economics assume that decision maker discount future by a constant fraction each time period. Delta, so that's the discount factor, which is so the overall utility would be utility in a in the first period plus delta times the utility in the second period plus delta squared times the utility in the third period. All right, so now delta is not hard to estimate because given the formula you, where you basically have a linear equations. Here you have a linear equation, then as long as you have a limited period, you can put the future income into an ORS regression and you can get an estimate of the various deltas, then you can back out what the delta should be. Or if you want to do it in one go, you can do what's called a non-linear v-square, which gives you the, an estimate of delta directly. So it's relatively easy to estimate. If, if you have, even in cases where you have an indefinite, pe indefinite periods of return, if they are ref if they are stable, then you can just use the geometric sum form formula to back out what delta is. So delta is relatively easy to estimate. The problem is not that it's difficult to estimate delta, but rather the estimates are everywhere. Since the 1970s, there are numerous studies that try to estimate delta, and towards, as you see, towards the 1990s, when the idea of empirically verifying these kind of basic factors in the economic model becomes popular, you see a lot of estimates. And the estimates are unfortunately not consistent with each other. At the low end, you have delta estimates of zero, which means that individuals do not care about future. Any future periods have a discount factor of zero. So zero times any future utility is zero. So they don't care about the future. On the other end, a lot, uh, there, are, there are studies that show that discount factors are as high as one or even higher than one. A discount factor of one means that they care about the future just as much as they care about today. There's no discounting. And a discount factor higher than one would say that they care about the future more than they care about today. While it is true that most of the discount factor measures are in the range of 0 0.8 to, 0, or to less than 1, which would be probably what you think are reasonable, as you will see in a moment, still, the fact that the factors are everywhere is disconcerting because it just doesn't fit very well into the model we have. 
how come sometimes you find people not caring about the future and sometimes you find people care about the future a lot. Now let's do a very simple thought experiment and you'll see why this problem occurs. Suppose I'm going to give you a hundred dollars this at this moment, right? Suppose I can give you a hundred dollars at this moment and I suppose I can instead give you money after two weeks. How much money would it take for you to not take this hundred dollars now? So obviously you have to, this is hypothetical, but just imagine that this is actually going to happen and you trust that I can actually give you money. If, if instead of taking away a hundred dollars today, and I ask you to wait for two weeks, how much more money do you want? Just write it down somewhere. Because I'm going to ask you a second question. So <laughs> write it down somewhere, just for yourself. Well, how much would you want? Okay, so I'm seeing estimates. So I'm seeing estimates as, as low as 101 and as high as 130, which is still, I would say, based on my experience, still on the low side in these kind of thought experiments. There, used to, there are sometimes people going as high as 150. Sometimes. So 101 is definitely very low uh, for this kind of this this particular question. Uh, okay. So I would say let's just use 120 as an example because it's easier to calculate. Something up. So 105 would be a more difficult. Let's say 120. Now, let's work out the delta in this case for one week, right? Uh, so, oh, so it's the hourly run. Okay, one hundred dollars today equals to delta for a week times one hundred and twenty in two weeks. Oh, sorry, the delta for two weeks, right? So, what do you have? That gives you delta equals to 100 over 120, right? And that's roughly 8, 0 0.8 something, right? Uh, I think it's something what? Uh, 0 0.8. Now, the problem with this is let's let's fit it back to the standard model. If you have a discount factor of zero point eight three for two weeks, then the median student in our class should be indifferent between hundred now and hundred divided by by the same formula. 0.83 to the power 26 and without even calculating you know this number is going to be big right let's try let me open the calculator do I have a scientific calculator here let's see apparently 
this calculator is very simple. Do anyone does you do you have a scientific calculator? Actually, uh, maybe I'll use the one in. Okay. So one hundred divided by zero point eight three to the power twenty six. Twelve thousand dollars and seven hundred and four, seven hundred five. All right. Okay. If if you have a discount factor of zero point eight three, or in other words, if you want one hundred and twenty dollars to wait for two weeks, if you, so, people seem to want a lot of money in the short term, but not a, but the long term implications would be absurd. And does, is this is only a hypothetical? No, it's in real world. Short term loans typically have extremely high interest rate, suggesting people are willing to pay for such rates, right? So payday loans, payday loans are short term loans, usually two weeks or less, intend to be paid back at payday when you get your paycheck. So that's why they call the name payday loan. Very high effective interest rate. For example, 10% interest for a two-week loan. And based on what we have in surveyed in our class, plenty of people would be willing to pay for these kind of loans. And in effect, so but if you have a two ten percent interest rate in for two weeks, the effective yearly interest rates is over one thousand percent. Right? If you if I if I frame it this way, it would totally look like a criminal business. And look at the places that give you payday loan, right? Signs with Eon Leon neon lights, right? Telling you there is the payday loan available. It doesn't, it doesn't look like the big type that you would go normally, right? But the fact that they exist suggests that there are people with extremely high discount factor for such short-term loans. In reality, sometimes it goes as high as $7,000. You don't need to look Far. Just look at local news, right? There was one example where there was an individual who borrowed like what fifty thousand dollars in Hong Kong. Then this, then the then the then the consulting company that helps him get the loan charge him fifty thousand dollars. So that's effectively all interest and no print, no principal, right? So it's all interest. So. So the problem with the standard model is people seem to have very high discount factor for short term, for the short term, which does not seem to hold for the long term. So there, is, there has to be something wrong here. What could be the reason? Now, in the case of payday loan and in the case of our four experiments, you could think of a couple of reasons. One is the transaction cost of getting future payment. For example, for example, maybe you don't plan to come to class in the future. Then you, it would be very troublesome to come here just to get the $120, $105 or something. So you want 120 in order to come here. But in our class experiments, you are coming to class anyway in two weeks. It's a midterm, so it just, that doesn't seem to be a problem in there. Miscalculation. Miscalculations. Maybe people just don't know how to do math, right? So they think of any, they think of a number, seems like it's cheap. This is possible. This is certainly possible. Why do you know that? Because in advertisement for loans, in personal loans in Hong Kong, they typically show you their effective interest rate in daily terms. How many, what's the interest rate is in daily? And if you think about it, any reasonable interest rate, even if it's, a high, it's, it's, at, if, even if it's as, as high as 20 or 30%, if you, if you if you factor it out into 365 days, it's going to be very low. So that's possible. People simply do not know how to compound interest. So there's also a possibility of competition for limited resources. Is that the reason why you want to get the money now instead of the future? Maybe it's because if if you if you worry that if you wait, it will be all gone in the future. So the cookies at home will be gone by next week, so I'd rather eat them now than later. So that's also possible.
then there's the most important explanation of all in that people are just impatient. There's something special about having the thing now versus the future. And this concept is called present bias. People want things now. So to show that idea, think about this, this <coughs> second case. Once again, you have to trust that I can give you money. So this is a thought experiment. Getting $100 in 10 years and $120 in 10 years and two weeks. How many of you would pick the first over the second? None, right? Actually, even if I give you 105, you still probably pick the second. The, so the key insight from these two questions is, if you ask people to wait right now, they want a very high compensation, which means they have a very, they have a very low discount factor. But if you ask them to wait far into the future, they suddenly become very patient. This, this which would imply a high discount factor. What this means is that people seem to have this different discount factor depending on when you ask them to wait. Are you asking them to stop waiting right now? Or do you, are you asking them to wait in some future period? And if you reorder the studies that we have shown you in the previous plot by the time horizon of when they need to stop waiting, then it shows a very clear pattern of what I just mentioned. When you ask people to wait now, right now, the estimates of discount factor are low. That's, that's right. But as you as the as the period goes further and further, then they suddenly become more and more patient. So you clear you would see so you see a clear pattern here, right? The dots going from low to high. If you try to fit a curve across it, it would look something like this. Right? The, the black line would be a straight or a bit, right? A single straight line. But if you fit a curve, then it will be looking like this. This line, if you look at it, it's a hyperbolic curve. Right? It's a hyperbola. It's hyperbolic. So there's a phenomenon. There's the, there's a name for this phenomenon that the discount factors seems to go up as the time horizon extends. This is called hyperbolic discounting. The discount factor seems to be hyperbolic. Now, in practice, when you find, try to incorporate this insight back into an economic model, like the, like the standard model, hyperbolic discount factor is not convenient to use. You go from a single constant factor to a hyperbolic shaped one, which is very complicated to do. So to simplify things, there's this straight line fit, this black line. The black line, as you see, captures most of the effect. The black line to be more accurate, I would draw a blue one to indicate what it really means. The, what the really black line means is if you, instead of a hyperbolic shaped curve, you have a piecewise linear fit. The blue line. And if you ask people to wait right now, they have, they are relative, they are relatively impatient relatively impatient, but if you ask them to wait in the future, then they become more patient. This, this two piece, this piece Y linear fit captures most of the effect without the mathematical difficulties involved. 
even then, as you see, the calculations could become tedious, as you have uh, in some cases, which we will show today. And so, I'll mention that. So, this approximation is called beta delta discounting. So the overall ut utility is now the utility right now plus beta times the discounted future utility. So the difference between the standard model and the beta delta model is the addition of a beta term in, in front of all future income. So it's a tiny modification to make it more powerful to explain people's behavior. The mathematical similarity with the standard model is part of its attraction. Right? Now that I find you're copying, I realize I didn't I forgot to mention I forgot to upload the slides, right? Yeah, okay, I'll upload I'll upload it tonight. <laughs> Yeah, I was wondering, ah, oh, it seems to be missing something. So if beta equals to 1, we get back the standard model in economics. But if beta is more than 1, then the model is different from the standard model. In particular, the decision maker values the current period more than the difference between any two future periods. Now, this, the, one of the very important <coughs> features, actually I would say the most important feature of the standard economic more, this discount model is that any t the, the difference between any two periods depends only on the time difference and not on their, their absolute period. So today, the difference between today and tomorrow is the same as the difference between tomorrow and the day after. That's the cornerstone of the standard model. The beta delta model essentially removes that assumption. Today is special. Today is much more important. Today compared to tomorrow is much has a much bigger difference than tomorrow compares to the day after. So that's the main difference. Today is special. Tomorrow versus the day after is not particularly special. The difference is just the difference will be similar to the standard model. But when tomorrow comes, that tomorrow becomes today, then tomorrow will be special. So today is always special. So that's the idea. Today is always special. If you if you want a very simplistic one line interpretation, would be instant instant gratification. People like instant gratification. They want it now. But because if people want things right now, like and they written now is very special, then the model is time inconsistent. That is, if the individual make a decision today about the future, they would change their mind when the future comes. What would be a, without going to the, without, without, before going to the math, let me give you an example. You, de you decide to start studying for the midterm next Monday. Then when next Monday comes, you decide it's going to be Wednesday. And when Wednesday comes, you decide it's going to be Friday. That's time inconsistent. So the standard model such, says that you can never do that. When you, what would happen? In the standard model, Either the benefit of study is high enough that it's such that you would actually start studying on Monday, or you will be rational enough to know that you would not start studying until the night before. So that's your rational choice. Yeah. Now you see the problem of the standard model. Okay. So the standard model, economic model of intertemporal choice is time consistent. So preferences are stable over time. You know what you're going to do, unless there's risk involved. What? Where are the things I type? <laughs>